Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Android App Addicts, the uh, show where we talk about Android apps and apparently addicts. Uh, welcome to the 400th show. Uh, glad uh, to have you with us. Glad to be with you. I'm just excited to be here, but uh, I am not the only one here also joining me. Uh, well, actually, I'm joining them is the better way to say it, uh, are the, the trio, the the ones who... who uh, made their way into your heart. Uh, Steve, the door-to-door geek, McLaughlin, um, Steve Cherubino, double Steves, and of course, Eric Ardini. Hi, guys. Hey, Mark. Great to have you all Hey, here. Mark. And uh, welcome to the most honest podcast you're listening to right now. <laughs> it's the best. There is not a better podcast you're listening to right now. And the sound quality of the podcast you listen to is far superior to anything else you're listening to. Right now. Yep. Right now. Is so the, how are you doing, Mark? The horse dead yet? I think it is. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> Glad to be here with you. How are you, my friend? Decent. Crazy week, but decent. Uh, I'm, I'm like you. I've been looking a lot of the phones here in the last week, and once in a while I just got to take a break and step back. Well, you know, um, Asus announced a bunch of weird phones this week. I, I, I wanted to talk about them a little bit on the show. The uh, The idea of a double selfie camera, double cameras all the way across, what does it mean? Um, and, and giant batteries and huge screens, and I just... I don't get it. What are they? Are they phones? Are they... Uh, and there was... What's the other one? The company that introduced the 10 core phone because um, you, why not Asus. have 10? Yeah, that's the Asus Predator. Okay, also another Asus. All right, so it's all Asus all the time. Except for Sony who brought out a 4K phone this week too. Yeah, because we all want 4K on a 5 <laughs> screen. battery life is just who needs it when you got 4K to look at. You know, we finally get a good solid battery. Big, bigger phones let you put a bigger battery in, so now we're in the 5, 5.5, 6 inch phone range. You can really get something that'll last you know, all day, 24 hours, even 48 hours. So we got to screw that up by cramming 10 cores and a 4K screen in there just to make sure that you got to run for your charger every couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Seems like it. That's yeah, right. I'm and, gonna buy one. I'll buy one anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say, and um, Lenovo announced the Yoga Tab 3, which is a 10-inch Android tablet with a Pico Pro um, Pro projector built in and um, four surround sound speakers. That that's the ultimate camping device. Yeah. How and surround I was wrong. sound can it be when it's all in front of you? I don't know. But I but I will say I was wrong. It's the Acer Predator Six. Okay. That's the uh, ten core four speaker ridiculous. <laughs> it's crazy. I think it's great. I think it's fun. I'm glad they're going out on a limb for us. Yeah, going all out. Well, it just goes to show you that the the modern smartphone has arrived. There there are no more innovations to be made, so we just got to double down on old innovations. Yeah, put some fishtails on the back of it. Yeah, it just means fins, the, yeah, I mean. that's right. Some some fins. That just means the market is ripe for somebody to to pull an apple and do something that nobody's ever seen before. You know. Uh, smartphones existed before the iPhone, but Apple introduced something nobody had ever seen before. I don't know that Apple is in a position now to do that again, uh, but who knows? Maybe Asus is. I hope somebody does. I used to count on Apple to do it, and they've kind of let me down since the Jobian era has ended. How, how are you, since you uh, are on that subject, how, how's that going with you I, and your, your 6 Plus? I'm not gonna lie, to take Uh-oh. a <laughs> to take a saying from door. I uh, for the first time since I got this phone, I thought about hmm, I wonder what it would like to be be like to have an Android again. And I just remember Eric saying on the last episode I was on, five months. You're not gonna last two months with that thing. It's been about <laughs> it's been like two or three months. Um, that being said, I I that that was a fleeting thought. And I'm still really enjoying this phone. It's, it's got some little buggies that are annoying, um, but so did my Android phone. So it's it's you know they're about the same. They really are about the same to me as far as uh, just 
use and everything about them. It's it's just a piece of hardware. Nothing I was thinking like about you this week and and your phone. I don't know why. It just popped into my head that <laughs> you wouldn't get a note because the because they were too big, and you didn't like how your hand would have to reach all the way across to do stuff. Mm-hmm. And you, you got the six plus. How's that? How's that working out for your hand? Has it grown? Is it? Yes, I mean. It, the size is fine. It's, it's fine. I'm used to it, and I've kind of like, um, I've kind of resigned myself to the fact that phones are big now, and I will probably get the biggest phone that's out there, no matter if yeah. it's Android or Apple, just because I enjoy the screen real estate more than the comfort and the usability of the of doing that, having my one hand reach all the way across the screen. I'm over it. Yeah, I'll, n- I'll never have nothing smaller than this Note mm-hmm. ever again. Yeah. Unless I go to a dumb phone and get off the grid or something. Don't do that. The note is five and a half inches? Um I think it's six. I don't know. It's about this big. Well, I'm not <laughs> sure. I didn't, I didn't measure it. I've been looking at a couple seven inch phones. Oh yeah. Yeah, seven inch that's my tablet. Right. Yeah. So I think this is I think the note's maybe six then. Well, see, my logic if, is if I get a if it is if I can pull off getting a Scotty vest, well, then I can get a seven-inch tablet. I'm so. telling you, when the first Galaxy Tab came out, it was a seven-inch tablet, and I wanted so bad for that thing to be an actual phone. I would, if it was a phone, I would have got rid of my phone and bought the Tab. And and in, I think in Europe it was. It had phone capabilities. Mm-hmm. I loved that form factor. I am like, I don't care how stupid that thing looks like when I hold it up to my head, like how big it is. I don't care. I just loved it. And it just, it didn't happen, and I lost interest, and I just, you know, I guess I'll get normal phones. And now we're back to that point where phones are approaching seven inches, so. And, and these days, and now, a few years now, more recently, everybody's got Bluetooth everywhere. So it's not like you, you're not always holding your phone right. up to your ear to even talk right. to anybody anymore, like you, like we did back then. That's right. If you break down my phone usage, actual phone conversations is like maybe 12% of what I do or less. Oh, yeah. Right? And probably half of those are over some Bluetooth device in the car or, or with an earpiece in. So the holding the phone up to your head thing, that, that is such a small percentage of my time. It's not even doesn't even factor into the conversation. My, for me, it's about can I slip it into a pocket comfortably. Um, yeah. That's, well, that's the thing. Well, I'll say um, I might have – five minutes of phone conversations or phone activity a week and 90% of the time it's me not picking up the phone and hanging up on somebody. <laughs> do you really do that? Yes. If somebody calls you, you just pick it up and hang up. No, you slide, no, slide it to yeah, ignore. I just slide to hang up or I hit the volume down button to <laughs> pick up the voicemail. That'd be funny uh, if he actually answers it just so they can hear the click. Oh, yeah. See, that's... <laughs> okay, side buttoning somebody is one thing, but answering and hanging up on them, that's different. Well, I, I mean, because... No, because if it's... If it's really important, they'll leave me a voicemail, and then I'll tell my wife to call them back up. Um, but I have my wife on Boxer. <laughs> so, like to call. I don't... You know, <laughs> anybody else can... Eh. I was at work one day, and my mom called, and I, I swiped it to the red side... And one of my coworkers said, "Did you just use the fu button on your mom?" <laughs> well, if that's what you call that, yes, I did. It's okay because she doesn't know. But when right. I side button people, they they that next time I see them, they go, "Why'd you side button me?" <laughs> so you just have to do it to people who aren't as savvy, like moms. Well, she, at least she didn't. You told her about it though, Mark, because you know if you didn't, she'll, she's going to hear it now. Right, like my 75-year-old mom listens to podcasts, specifically this podcast. Yeah, because she's hep like that, you know. Yeah, proud of her little boy. Yeah, I, my, my mom's never. My mom doesn't even have the internet, so I, I could probably say anything, and she'd never hear this. She recently got an Android smartphone. It was uh, some whatever the prepaid carrier that she's on with got her a blue phone, BLU. You guys familiar yep. with those? I think they're Korean phones. It's actually a really solid phone, other than the fact that it gets up to about 900 degrees while she's using it. Mm. Otherwise, it's a great phone. <laughs> that sucks. Wow. Does it have the Play Store on it? Put a big aluminum yep. fan and heat sink on the back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Play Store. It's a fully licensed uh, device with, with, with Google. Nice. Um, and it's a you know it's a five inch phone with uh, 
I think it's a two core processor in it, which is probably too much for what it's doing. It's running like gingerbread. It's an old version of Android, but it's fine for for a 75 year old grandma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a uh, friend in his <clears throat> in his 70s. He just got a smartphone a couple months back, first 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 time, and uh, I just today he, I, he was talking to me, and I just wanted to slap him. He's going to a <laughs> trip to Europe. And he's saying, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get off the plane. I, I hate when I'm not, like, I don't have a map and I have to go get a map. And I'm like, I'm like, look. Can, can I you even you buy this? maps anymore? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, do you realize, and this is, I'm going to tell him, this is the last time I'm going to tell you this because I've told him before. You will never have to buy a map again. Wherever you are, just turn on your phone and click maps. And it'll tell me where exactly where I am. Yes, and if you want turn by turn navigation to anywhere else in the world, it will do that too. So, yeah. yeah, people still say, "Do you know how to get to my house?" No, I, but Google uh, does. Fastest way to lose respect in my book. Yeah. Let me. And when they start saying like, "You're gonna pass a Wendy's," <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Or if they say, "Can you fax it to me?" <laughs> uh, I I actually got one of those recently. Um, so how about we talk about some apps since th- that's sort of the name of the show, literally. Um, start with uh, with you, Mr. Mister Geek. <laughs> what have you got for Oh, us? thank you. Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, first I want to say we are now streaming this show. It's free for anyone to watch. We're publicly doing the stream, but the chat is still going to be private to the AAA club only. So if you want to watch this show live, Anybody can do it. Uh, hopefully soon, all you got to do is follow twitter.com slash podnuts, and you'll get announced when, when that the show goes live. But if you want to partake in the uh, chat, you have to join the newsletter and the club. Okay. And there are currently 319 people in the chat room at this moment, so it's a, it's yes. a real rousing experience. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a special exactly. episode, though. It's not like that it's always like this. Sometimes, well, though. Eric, my, my mama told me it was special. Each one of these episodes are special. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, okay, before, the first... you, before you guys start talking about apps, I just wanted to come on and just say hi, just to, for the 400th episode. I don't have an Android phone, so all the apps you talk about would just be completely lost on me. Even though I probably would be able to get some. I, you know what? I know mine's dual, uh, dual OS. But okay. That's fine. I just wanted to come on and say hi, and uh, I miss you guys, and um, I just wanted to let all the listeners know and tell it, say, say publicly. But I think these guys are doing a kick-ass job. Super happy to have Mark here, and um, it's a great trio. So uh, I'm proud to listen to you guys. And Thank uh, you, Steve. yeah, keep kicking ass, and uh, I'll see you guys when I see you. Okay. All right. Thank we'll you. See. Thank you, Steve. But if I ever start the game show up, you know you got to come out to at least a couple shows. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Later, guys. See you later. You know, Steve said there he's he's a listener. I actually no longer get the joy of listening to the show. I kind of I, I kind of miss out on that now. I, oh, it's still, no. it's still in, my, in my feed, right? And it comes out and I'm like, oh, I, I know what that was. I was there for that. <laughs> as long as you keep it in the feed, that's all I care. <laughs> you still get the download door, yeah. Exactly, thank you. Uh, okay, this, 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 this first app, um, I mistook what it was. I will say that. I thought it was more of a task note-taking application but this is an application task application. So a- task application to task applications. It's the only way I can explain it. Okay, it's called pin tasking. Um, hypothetically, you start an email up, and you don't want to forget to make the email, but you've got to do something else. You can use this app, pin tasking. Uh, if you have software, home, back, and menu buttons, you can tie this into home button slide up. Uh, if you have physical home buttons like I do on the OnePlus One, I option for that. Uh, you can pull from the drop down menu and say pin this. And it will take the application you're currently in and put it like on the side of your screen, uh, kind of like the Moto 360 watch where it's not a full circle, there's a bump taken out of it. And it's like hanging on the side of your screen. You can do other things while it's sitting there waiting for you to get back to it. Um, this is good if you get caught in the middle of, of doing something else and you don't want to forget about it and you want to come back to it. Because there's a physical on-screen re, um, 
reminder that you have this thing pending. So I definitely like this app. I definitely see a use case for this app. I'm not sure I am going to use this app because like I hang up on people, phone calls. I also ignore many real world conversations, so I don't have much interruptions. That's an OCD nightmare for me to, to have that thing there constantly floating. Um, yeah, it would just be, yeah, I couldn't do that. I'm actually getting a little cold chills just looking at the picture on the, on the Play Store. It's always there when you have this app installed? If, if you pin a app. If, if you, you do not app. pin an app, then there's nothing sitting there. Yeah. But I was hoping it was a task-based thing that you could say, okay, I have to write an email, and it saw the word email, and it would give it the email icon. That, that's what I thought was going on here. But it I, isn't. It's actually the app itself. This uh, the note has this kind of built into it where you can multitask and you basically just swipe from the corner and it opens up a whole new window with whatever other app you want to run and you can have them piled, piled up on the side like a. I never use it either though, Dor. I I, I I guess I just don't get that busy on my phone to to have multiple, you know, windows open and switch back and forth that quickly. I, I mean, I do use my recent apps a lot. I do that, but. Um, as far as I go, I don't I don't need them on the screen. They're not that far away. Gotcha. If I need a reminder, I say, "Okay, Google, remind me too," and I have a reminder. I don't. I love that reminder. I don't need something floating on my screen all the time. Right. I I do honestly abuse the built-in reminders and notifications built into Google now. As, particularly now that I have a smartwatch, not now. I mean, I've had it for months now. Um, it's just it's it's part of my everyday life. I just tilt my f- wrist up, say, "Okay, Google, say what I need to, to do," without ever taking my phone out of my pocket. And it's um, it, it sounds like a silly thing, and it is a silly thing. But once you incorporate it into your life, it really is uh, powerful in in a way that you can't understand until you do it. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, and I'll say it sounds to me like you're kind of like me as in a creature of habit. Once you figure out a physical thing to do, it's easy to r- repeat, thus it's hard to stop. In some weeks, I totally forget I own a watch. <laughs> Speaking of watch, we do have the episode 400 watch face out there now for um, everybody. Smooth. No, you, you started the watch thing. but um, are, are we going back and forth on our apps today? Uh, sure. Since we've only had one app, I guess the the fourth would be you. So what do you got? Well, I didn't know if it was going straight to door again. I've got this little app. It's called Diddy, D-I-T-T-Y by Zaya. Diddy by Zaya. And basically what this is, is it's an app that will sing a song. It'll it'll take your take whatever text you type in and make it into a song. And this week, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Fight Song by Rachel Platten. That's the song that it's going to sing to you now. Um, and I typed in a little something, and it's going to process it. And uh, I will turn up my volume so you guys can hear. I typed in uh, a little something about the 400th episode and Android App Addicts. And then after I close out of a Hearts of Vegas ad... It... <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with that song or not, but it's just saying it's show 400 Android App Addicts. It's got an odd, kind of an odd, uh, um, an odd uh, speech thing going on there. Like maybe she's from Europe or something. I don't know. It's very impressive though. It didn't sound yeah. robotic. It, it sounded it, a little weird, but not robotic. Because it's actually singing them words to the same tones that it should be. Yeah, see, Steve should really be around here for this one, for this app. But they, there's a well, bunch of free ones like like the hallelujah and it'll say whatever you type in for that. So how long does it take to between the time you type in and the time and you can listen to it? I did it right there. Just, oh, just wow. right live. So six seconds for... I think it may take longer. Um, it depends on how many characters you... you know, how many words you type in there. And you do kind of... If you know the song that you're playing, you do kind of want to make the the cadence of the words that you type in go with what the song might have, you know? 
because um, it's going to take your words and if you, it might split it in a weird place in the middle of a sentence if you don't have it go along with the song. Okay, well, I'll, I'll admit, I first didn't completely get what you were saying. Then I heard it, and I com- it, 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 and I didn't really hear it. And then right there, by the end, I actually heard what was going on, and I will say, it might sound a bit weird, but I'm shocked at how well it sounds. But this is unbelievably like somebody trolled me, because this is what I do to my children and drive them nuts. Oh, I, yeah. Anytime I hear them sing a song, I ask the wife, what's the song? And I listen to the song. And then, like, first thing in the morning, I sing to them about how they have to get up to that song that they were singing. Ooh, it drives them completely nuts. <laughs> well, this totally destroys any argument you have about what the proper lyrics are. Because you can now play whatever lyrics you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Bingo Jet got a light out. Uh-huh. But uh, but they do have a lot of a lot of songs available on here. Um, there's quite a few for free, like Hickory Dickory Dock and Fear Elise. There's a, a generic dubstep one that I, I don't know about. But then there's a lot of pop songs that Isn't all you can buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say all that. But I like having Mark on the show. <laughs> there's 99 cents. That most most of the good like Working for the Weekend by by Lover Boy. That's 99 cents. Um, it's Matchbox 20 songs, the Elvis, you know, that's so all. So did we just cost you a buck for the uh, no, 400 that, show? That was the free one for the week, that song. It's, it, it's, a, it's a fairly popular song that you might hear on the radio right now, so it's, it's kind of What's nice. a radio? It's, it's the thing that hooks into your serious. It's what your thing. podcast player plugs into. Yeah. 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 Ah, gotcha. There you go, there you go. Yeah, this That's, is a good app. Now Eric, now, Eric, did we see this in the? Uh, Google did we Plus. get posted this in Google Plus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, yep. Probably Tom. I'm not sure though. Diddy by Zaya, Z Y A. Yes, it was Tom Zach again. Tom Zach. I had Zach. a fedora on. Tom Zach. I would tip the fedora to you, but I'm just wearing a regular hat. I tip my hat to you. Uh, you always bring very good apps, sir. Tom Zach is at least as much of an Android app addict or more than us, even. It's, bit, it's so fascinating bit. to me sometimes the the things that we can do. You know, I I look around and I say, look what man can do, and then I then I look around and say, but look at what we choose to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that yeah, that's yeah, really incredibly impressive that you can write a song and and it sounds relatively normal and it, it's in tune. It's right and in in a matter of seconds you can do that on a device in your hand. The technology to do that would make you a god. In medieval times, mm-hmm. but we choose to <laughs> we choose to or even to the do 80s. weirdest things with it. Yeah, even in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. It, instead, we choose to argue about the Confederate flag and Southern <laughs> states and make apps that make non-singing sound like singing. That's so funny. I've I've never seen more Confederate flags than recently. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, there's trucks. Oh. Just they're built into trucks Hello. now. <laughs> it's the um. It's the um. Strizen effect all over again. All right, so how about we do app app email? So for my contribution, I will read an email from Travis Swain, who says, enjoy the show. I do have a request. Could you please mention permissions when reviewing apps on AAA? I want to install, uh, I went to install Peel Remote, saw the huge list of permissions, and ran. Why would a remote need to see my contacts? Yeah, I, you know what, I, I don't, I don't look at that. <laughs> I don't want to look at that. I, I just install them, and I figure if I've got a phone that says Google in my pocket, the I I figure I'm not. There's nothing I can hide. They know it all anyway. It doesn't matter. Well, Eric, man, you give up so easily. You and I your craptastic note. Um, I run. I don't read it, and I don't care what the permissions are because I run X privacy, and I simply just don't let apps see what they want to see. Um. X privacy mimics what the Android M app infrastructure is going to be, which is you download an app, you install an app. The first time it wants to look at insert X here, whether it be your contacts, your um, uh, internet access, your SD card, it prompts you and asks you, do you want to let this app do this? And X privacy does that to which I say, uh, no, click. Um, so I don't care about flashlight apps that access 
of the core of a nuclear reactor because on my phone it gets blocked. So I don't, I do not look at permissions at all. Uh, and to be quite honest, there's a bit too many permissions per app to explain. And yeah. ironically, X privacy uh, doesn't require any special permissions to run. It, well, root and exposed. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just I just tried to install it on my phone and it said this doesn't require any special permissions, which is surprising right. me considering what it does. Well, you'd think it would need more. Because the permissions it it asks for is not even known to Google in, in the app ecosystem. Because it's root. It's probably not going to work for me because I don't have the exposed framework. I'll say I do believe the app will open up, but I do not believe it, it will properly intercept applications from accessing things. All right. So, uh, yeah, and also that's just really hard to do because they, A, you can only see that when you're installing it, so we'd have to be paying attention at the time of install and writing them all down, and B, they change from time to time. So, I, I do have to agree with him. I mean, I don't know why a remote control app needs to know your contacts either, but um, I'm sure well, they've got the reasons. I'll say, I do believe 99.999999% of the time there is some some justification to where you can click share something, share a configuration of a remote control, and it will say, do you want to share it with your contacts? You click contacts and then pick your contact. Like, oh, um, Bill's got the same TV I has. Maybe he could just doesn't even have to go through any setup. Here you go. Right. So it's plausible, I'll say this, but we still don't know. We still can't say, okay, now only have access to my contacts when I hit this button. So right. yeah. I, I and, um, don't go, go quite that far. I do run a firewall on my phone with a, with a default block. So an app comes up, and, it, and unless I tell it it can access the Internet, it can't. But more and more, everything wants to reach out to the Internet. Uh, so, you know, almost, I can't run almost any games anymore uh, without, with the firewall running. Right, and um, if you're looking at the app in the Play Store on a full desktop browser, you can go to the bottom and click per, um, per missions view details. Um, but it really doesn't go into depth why it's asking for access. So I don't know how much we could learn or share from doing that. All right, yeah. so that's app app email. Now it's back to you, Mr. Mr. Door to Door Geek. What's your next app? Okay, uh, this app it reminds me a lot of the old MIT App Inventor. Okay, no, sorry. It used to be called Google App Inventor. Then it was basically given off, I believe, to MIT. Now they keep it up. It's a very GUI-centric interface to create basic applications, almost with a drag-and-drop interface. And this, to me, reminds me of that a lot. Okay, it's called Pocket Code Learn Pro um, Programming. Um, this, I can just say, is a fantastic idea. You can, on your phone, this is the ultimate meta experience, in my opinion, on your phone, you can create an app that can do stuff on your phone. Um, you can make an app that you can have an interface that can either turn on the camera, turn off the camera, turn on the um, gyroscope, uh, change your volume, change your brightness, open up a web page, open up another app. Um, so you can basically create your own interface via this app development kit, or even games if you want kind of thing. Uh, this to me is the ultimate thing to give a child and tell them to just go hog, to, to just go hog, hog wild. Hmm. Yeah, this is, yeah. I, I remember the other one had like puzzle pieces or something, didn't it? The, the one you were talking about? Uh, this does have a little bit of that. Um, in the main interface when you create uh, case statements or if statements, you have that same jigsaw type thing where only certain pieces can fit in with certain pieces. Yeah, this is this is great for kids. And yeah, my more, kids are into all sort of stuff. There's there's uh, flash sort of game sites on the web that their school points them to, and and they they love doing that sort of stuff. So yeah, I could certainly see throwing that on a tablet and just saying, you know, go to town, do something. 
Um, mm -hmm. Kids kids like to be creative, and we might as well give them uh, the opportunity to do that with modern tools. Uh, and, and I'll say that this is by Cart Robot, C A R T R O B A T. Completely free, no in-app purchases. That to me is the uh, uh, best part of it. So you, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, cat robot. Cat robot. Cat robot. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Cat robot. All right. That's cool. It sounds like you've got a uh, Minnesotan accent there. <laughs> cat robot. <laughs> door door brings all the stuff that's uh useful. <laughs> I just bring this weird things. Alright, this one's called... You guys remember uh, they showed what Google sees pictures. Oh, man. Google image search sees things. And have you guys ever seen those pictures of what Google image search actually sees? And it ends yes. up being tons Deep of dream. dog. Deep dream. Okay. This is Dreamify. Basically, this can take a picture of you and make it look like that, with or a picture of anything really. I mean, it doesn't have to be just you. But this is this is um, on the screen. That's what I ended up looking like. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's kind of weird. Basically, that's disturbing. It is. It's very disturbing. It almost looks like the the guys that were stuck in the in the train on Pink Floyd the Wall movie, sort of. With the, with the masks on. Yeah, those th those dream things are really disturbing, and this is just a way to disturb yourself, I guess. <laughs> it looks like it's just sort of uh, cheap Photoshop filters, you know, put on top of a selfie, but, you know, I guess whatever it, works. It's kind of like it adds eyes everywhere, where it doesn't, right. they didn't really need eyes. And paisleys. My, my, well, my mouth became another eye. Well, it depends. On the Google Deep Dream engine... You can tell it to focus in on a certain thing, so it can be dog faces. You take a picture, and then it and then it will like slowly bring out dog faces everywhere you look, or yeah, eyeballs or mouths or horse heads or paisley thingy things, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, this is like how this is the way Google first described it. Do you know how sometimes when you look at a cloud you see a pirate ship? Well, what if we took that aspect of human vision and sight and put it into a computer, and then we forced it in every shape, way, or form to see something else inside of an image, and this is what pops out. Yeah. I'm not going to say that makes it any better, but <laughs> it's definitely creepy. Yeah, it's scary. It, it is creepy. Yeah, the, the last uh, the the last uh, screenshot in the app is is, is kind of epic, where it shows half of a regular person just drinking a cup of Joe, and then out in the forest, and then it just turns into wolves or something all over. Nice. The, the question that keeps coming to mind is why? I mean, I I, I don't understand the value of this <laughs> no, that's I don't, I don't mean the app I'm talking about the Google project I don't understand well, the value of it they think okay, I'll tell you what I heard they think it's going to be the beginning of understanding how computer artificial intelligence can work or grow to where if we can find out how because it's really this Google Deep Dream is literally something like, I think it was 36 different layers of instruction sets going on. Yeah, but we, we don't have to, to get to artificial intelligence by way of artificial psychosis. <laughs> well, I guess they want to understand all aspects of mental flaws. Does, don't the people who wrote that algorithm know that they wrote it for that? <laughs> Yes. Um, Has nobody seen 2001? Am I the only one? Mm -hmm. This is highly unusual, Eric. You usually have an <laughs> eye in your mouth. <laughs> All right, so that was two apps. Now back to an email following the trend of app, app, email. Um, let's start with uh, something from uh, Tom. Who, oh, it's actually, I guess I didn't get the whole email. 
Um, something about an anti-robocall contest. $25,000 prize. There's a link to it. Um, hmm. Do you remember what that's about? Digitaltrends.com. Robot killer app takes top prize in a $25,000 anti-robocall contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they were looking for... To me, this isn't really an Android app, per se. Um, they were looking for the ability to create a application that could be great at killing robocalls. Um, something that you could basically have in your house or maybe an app on your phone that would automatically kibosh anything that's not a real person calling you. And yes, I will say this robo killer says they are going to release it for Android. Um, there's no announcement of when, but I know they are in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign. Surprise, surprise. Uh, where, of course, you know, they're looking for some money. Uh, they wanted $75,000. They're at $23,000 with 66 hours to go. So apparently people don't mind robocallers. What's think, fascinating to me about this is this technology exists, but it's in the hands of the robocallers. So those systems mm -hmm. are designed to only transfer. So there's a, a, a pool of, of computers making phone calls all the time, and there's a pool of people waiting to receive those phone calls, the, the, uh, the telemarketers. And so when a human picks up, within about a half a second, the system recognizes that it's a human and transfers the call to the call center guy. So the technology's there, it's just in the hands of the bad guys. Right. Because if, if it's a fax machine or an answering machine, the system can recognize that. I'm not sure how. Uh, but that they with with very high accuracy, uh, that's why guy, people who work in call centers never talk to answering machines because that's a waste of money. So we're, we're turning the tables on these guys. Or you could just be like, Dorton, just don't answer the phone. And problem solved. Mm -hmm. I think I think that this this app would get more funding if if it was for uh, if you could install it on your home phone. That's where a lot of people's robocalls end up. I don't I don't get nearly no, as no. much. Eric Eric junk Eric Eric, Eric Android. Normal people these days don't have a home phone. Let's just get past that. Uh, the rate of home phone adoption has dropped nearly eighty percent in the last I think it was eight or ten years. Uh, people just aren't getting home phones. Um, I have complete a waste phone, money. it's an OB high connected to a Google Voice account, but it's technically my home phone. Yeah, I mean, you, you use you can buy the Panasonic handset from Walmart and get three of them yeah. connected together with an answer. I, I've yeah, my home phone is an UMA that costs me four dollars a month for unlimited um, nationwide calling. It's not like it's AT and T, uh, Bell South or something, but it's still a home phone. Now, I think most people these days just get a device. Or they buy the home phones, or they come home, set their phone, their cell, their mobile phone down. It connects Bluetooth with the uh, unit in the house, and then all their phone calls ring through the house on their home phone. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I don't have that. I, I do use my home phone a lot to find my cell phone. Um, that's <laughs> probably its main use. When I well, when I moved from Texas, I didn't transfer my number. I still have the same number I've had for 15 years. Uh, in Texas, so I got that "quote unquote" home phone so that I could have a local number to put on forms when I'm filling out school forms and, and work forms. Yeah. That's the only reason I did that. Right. And I'll say, Mark, of course, the best robocaller software is in those things. Just like the best antivirus in the world on Windows computers is probably in some Uzbekistan virus sweatshop. Exactly, because they don't want to get hacked. Exactly. All right, Dor, what's the next app you have for us tonight? Uh, okay, next app I'm going to bring, I'm going to completely admit, and that is I did not get a chance to fully look at this app, but the name alone made me want to bring it to the show. Okay, it's called Blink, but it's spelled B-L-Y-N-K. Uh, Blink are um, Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Uh, so what this apparently is, it can turn your phone into a remote control for a R for a R for a Arduino or a Raspberry Pi device. So I'm guessing there's some thing you can put on 
a Arduino operating system or a Raspberry Pi based operating system that can help this. Uh, Probably work. have to have a, a Bluetooth sensor added to those boards somehow. To... It's Ethernet. Oh, Ethernet from, from your I'm, cell phone? From what I'm reading, uh, you, you the. I don't know how to plug that in. You work over the Internet um, oh. using just regular whatever your network connection is. So it's network. So it's through the phone, it's Wi-Fi, and then down through the network back to the device. Huh. I, 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 do you remember, did I ever tell you guys how I got ripped off on a res, on a Arduino board thing on Indiegogo? Lost like 75 bucks for some funding thing I did. Two years later, I just got like an email the other day. They're like, hey, we took over that, that project. You can wait for your board or you can get cash back. It'll take a while. Or right now we'll give you a gift card for the amount and you can come to our store and buy whatever you want with that money. So I, I, haven't, I haven't taken them up on any of it yet. I was just excited to actually see I didn't get totally ripped off. Well, I mean, I'll say Indiegogo and Kickstarter, you're not buying anything. Even if you says you're getting a reward, it's like an investment. And investments don't always oh. investicize or something. Oh, okay. They have no obligation to actually do the thing they said they're going to do on either of those sites. They can take the money and run, and they, they don't have to do anything. That's what I figured he did. I, I, I just uh, I was surprised. I was glad. Uh, okay, okay. Well, well, here's one good thing I picked up on this thing, Mark. The Blink server can be installed in minutes on your own home network. So you don't have to necessarily connect up to the Blink cloud, but hypothetically, if you use the Blink cloud, you can be in Toledo, and your Raspberry Pi can be in Argentina, and you can, you know, turn on lights, turn off lights, control the G, the um, GPIO outputs and stuff like that. And I will say, I was looking at a um, Pi hat, I believe it was called Sense, hat, where it literally had like um, five or six sensors on top of it. Uh, everything from humidity, temperature, um, duh, noise sensor. So you could have a Raspberry Pi sitting there for less than 60 total dollars and monitoring your crawl space for a leak or um your house for, uh, I, I would say a fire, but hopefully you have better precautions already in place for that. Um, so, so this might be able to tie in with that as well. So I will say the world of Arduino and Raspberry Pi is only expanding and getting more uh, depth and breadth. Yeah, that, that's cool. I, I didn't realize it would do both ways like that. So it you could just have it coming back to your phone. That's, that's uh, nice. I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm led to believe. Well, maybe I'll check this out when and if I get my Arduino and Shield and all that stuff. Give it a try. All right, Eric, do you have another app for us? Um, Sure. I've got, you know, this one. I played it with it just a little bit. It's pretty neat. It is called Glexter. Glexter, you know, I, I like having, you know, like a different launcher for my phone. Sometimes, you know, different background stuff. This is, this one is like a launcher for your app drawer. It changes your app drawer to a, um, a little more nicely organized way than just alphabetical. Or however, you know, some people don't do it that way too. Uh, but but it, it separates your apps that are installed on your phone from the ones that you've downloaded. So if you want to mm. quickly, quickly go through them, and then you can also make another folder of ones that you consider special. I can't remember what they called that. I can pull it up real quick. Uh, they got they had a, spe- a, a different name for that, um, for those apps. They had, yeah, my, my repository. Get quick access to your favorite apps for reinstallation. Oh. Backup, backup APK files of your okay. applications, or just save app links by adding them to the repository via context menu on apps or download the page. Okay, then here's the question. When you back up the APK, where does it go? 
I would imagine. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried that. Well, here's the reason I ask. Um, a couple Apple executives left Apple, starting their own company up, um, making a quote unquote cloud phone. Right now, my Git Pocket is not working because they're down for some kind of maintenance. Uh, and that was one of the biggest selling features of that cloud phone. Okay, me and this guy Ted, I'm not. Yeah. On, I don't know if I can say his last name right. Two years ago, plus said this was what we wanted in Android, and it was really him saying it and me filling in the cracks. We wanted an app drawer on our device that would recognize apps that were not launched for X number of days, and when they were not launched for X number of days, it would uninstall the application, but keep the settings on your phone, back up the APK to the cloud, but leave the app in your drawer but have it grayed out and then if you needed that app you would tap it it would go back up to your personal cloud service download the APK install it and run it seamless in one tap that's what this other phone manufacturer is offering for their next generation cloud centric phone and and I said to him I really hope this comes to be a full-fledged product because once app developers see somebody else doing this they're going to do it themselves and maybe even do it better. So that's what it sounds like these guys are starting to do too. And I yeah. love the idea of that just because there are people with small phones with, you know, four or eight gigs of space and that's it kind of thing. And they constantly run out of space. So this is the kind of thing that could easily seamlessly free up space on their device, but allow them to get their apps back when they need them. Okay, to me, it wasn't that that exact. So while you were talking about that phone, which I did, I recently heard about that. And that sounds awesome too. It's, um, the I so I uninstalled one. I, I put it in the re- repository, uninstalled it, went to the repository, and uh, it, it took me to the Google Play link. So I still have to hit install from there. Basically, it sounds. It looks like it just made a copy of. I don't know. It, it knew exactly where it was in the Play Store. It took me straight to that app, but um, I just have to hit install. Gotcha. Well, yeah, I do believe this company, Next Bit, you tap the app that's grayed out, and it silently installs it and launches it up. But I think they can do that because they're part of the phone where this is a downloadable app. So if you don't have root, it won't let you do that. And if it had root, maybe it will do it faster without a blocking you or interrupting you. It's it's still a good idea. If there's something you think you might use again, like, man, that was really, uh, that really helped me out today, that app. I know I'm not going to use it for six months. Maybe I'll just throw it over there so I got it again when, when I do need it so you don't forget it. Because there's so many apps I, I'll forget and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, I got to I, I reset my phone or get a new phone and, I, I, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, I got to install the Keyring app because that's where all my rewards cards are and you know, things like that. But I, I do use that one a lot. But. I've gone to the store to download an app to find out that I already had it. Like, hey, I need to go get Oh, I already have that. There's an app for that, My Paid Apps. That's a nice one to have, too. Yeah, and I will admit I've done that, too. But literally almost a third or up to a half at any given time of the apps on my phone are apps on my phone. And I keep them on the phone for two reasons. One, so I don't forget them, like you said, Eric, because I know I'm going to need them. I just don't need them right now. But two, I want to make sure that when I do need the apps again and I go to the store, they're not discontinued or taken down. So if I have it on my phone, they can't take it down. So either this app or the Nextbit phone solves that issue as well. But I am going to download this Glex store, which they need to – first thing they need to do is they need to get a new name. Um, Sounds like a download. They they do have a free and paid version. Um, The free one – I'm not sure what I'm missing. I, I know there's ads, so perhaps the, the paid one takes away the ads. Uh, I haven't explored to see if it was worth buying yet, though. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, so, uh, oh, go ahead, Thor. I, I was going to say, I'm going to hammer it, and I really hope it does what I expect to do, and I will have no problem paying for it. Yeah. My my only thing about what you were talking about, Thor, with the the if you've got a crowded phone, is that when you go to get it, what app are you going to have to uninstall to put it on because your phone is probably still full? Well, it, it's better to have that choice than to sit there and think, what's the app? What's the app? What's the app? So I'll say it isn't perfect. Not at all perfect. But on that so phone... 
add in a, a feature there to say, um, you need X amount of space for this. Here's three apps that aren't in that 75 day window yet, but you haven't used in 30 days. Would you like to archive one of those? Other other than an iPad, iPod, I don't think I've ever run across all the Android phones. I've never had um, to make that choice where hey, uh, I'm so full of stuff that I I can't download an app. Well, I run, I used to run into that all the time with my older devices and and on my kids' cheap tablets, it's constant because oh. you can slap a, a 64 gig card in there, but it's still only got like one gig of app storage space. Mm. Um, well, and so if you can't copy it to the SD card. Your stock. I'll say on my wife's phone and on my kid's tablet, the issue I'm finding, it stops you from installing an app, but it's typically not the apps taking up the bulk of the space. It's typically apps poorly written, keeping their cache on like the main drive instead of the SD card. Or, and I found where apps have went rogue, uh, like Google Play Music used to, and the Facebook still does, it will fill up your SD card with images and thumbnails of images. Um, I'm rarely finding the apps themselves taking up the space, but it's the corrupt around the app, which, of course, uninstalling an app typically gets rid of all the files on the uh, main partition of your Android device. Because what I do now on my kid's tablet is it, if it says an app cannot be installed, I go to the SD card, I delete the Android folder, completely, and then I go back and install the app. I've never had a problem. They they load that tablet up to the Hilton. It's one of those $20 tablets. Hmm. All right, so moving on to the, uh, the next email we've got. Uh, this comes to us from Todd, uh, who says, Hey, guys, just wanted to let you know about a little gem I found today called Star Horizon. It's a beautiful game with stunning graphics. I've just installed it and started playing it today, so I'm not knee-deep into it, but it's really fun. I'm not a gamer, per se, like Eric, but the controls aren't terribly frustrating for me like some flight games can be. The Play Store video is an accurate representation of gameplay, although they seem to make it look easier. I believe I paid $1.79, which is a great price, even if I don't end up mastering it. Just for a few minutes of incredible visuals, it's easily worth the price. I put it on my 7-inch LG tablet, but have yet to try it out there. I hope I have made someone happy with this fine. Keep up the great shows, Todd. P.S. You still have awesome sound quality, sans Steve C. <laughs> you have no idea how much I mean, Todd, because there's no doubt every time Steve C. would listen to one of these shows, he's being nice on the air telling me it sounds great. But I'm sure <laughs> when he listens to it by himself, he's like... You know, Dor just he just doesn't have it. He'll learn sooner or later how to do it, but he still just can't do it. <laughs> Try to tell him. That guy. Uh, um and I will say I didn't I've never seen this game before Todd mentioned it. Yeah. Two words. Gorgeous is all I'll say. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because it's gorgeous. It is. It's really like crazy good looking. It's two forty three Thankfully, my children have leftover money on their Google Play card, and we will have to, I will have to acquire this on their behalf because it's something that I think they would have fun playing. And it is T for teen, but I'm pretty sure my oldest one, who's not a teenager technically, is not going to have much of a problem with this. Man, the, the, the idea of fighting in outer space and the way things move around you as you're trying to do that, this game looks like it really gets it. It's uh, it looks way too complicated for me. I mean, yeah, it looks like you know graphic, the so. cutscenes from Halo mm. on a phone. Yeah, yeah, and I'll say I do believe, um, with this year halfway done, coming to the end of this year, we are only going to see more and more and more and more and more and more space-related games because you know Star Wars. Mm, true. So, d- just to derail the conversation a little bit, do you think that the the new Star Wars movie is going to usher in a new spate of space operas and that we'll see fewer superhero epics? Because, you know, the last five years has been all about the superheroes. Uh, do you think Star Wars is going to be a, a turning point in that? I can't, I, <laughs> I'm not a movie watcher, so I, I, I probably don't really have a... Uh opinion that I've seen maybe one of any of these superhero movies. 
I don't even know which one it was. I'll say we don't have to worry about superhero movies. They're already dead. Even uh, Steven Spielberg himself said, every every superhero movie for the last seven years, they said, has made less and less money versus how much it cost to make since like uh, the original newly created, new or created Spider-Man with uh, Topher on it. He said, uh, thank God, superhero he- movies discovered they're their own kryptonite. Um, so we don't have to worry about it. Within two or three years, we're not going to see them, and, except for the one every you know six to five years kind of thing. Um, I do think Star Trek was really the first one to make space movies hip again. Um, and I do think this Star Wars is going to basically do the same kind of thing, because it's the same guy. But I think it's going to do the same kind of thing where it's going to make space movies more than they were in the past. But even though, if you look at Star Trek, not a lot of the story had to do with space. Yeah, it's just the it's just the way we are as a society. We we pick a flavor, and it's a flavor for a season. Uh, you know, the rom com was all all the the rage in the '90s, right? And then the the giant robot movies were all over the place for a while. Um, and of course, the horror had its run. It, it, it's always a subgenre there, but it was really popular for a while. Now now is the superhero thing. And I think I think we're going to turn back more toward the space stuff. You know, there have always been space movies. There's always been one or two, but I think we're going to start seeing like five, six, seven, eight a year, like we're seeing with the superhero movies for you know five or six or seven years, and then we'll turn on to something else. Right. And the direct quote Spielberg said was, "Hero movies are going to go the way of the western." And we still have westerns once in a while. It's just they're not really westerns. It, it is sometimes set back in the day with a guy who happens to walk on dirt, ride a horse, and shoot a gun, but it's not really the same thing as the old w- westerns. I think that's what's going to happen with their superhero movies. And my personal belief is I'd much rather have less of them if they were in general better. You know, I want to. I only want to see the best of the best of the best of the best. I don't like seeing something that's okay or pretty good. I only want to see the stuff that's really really good. So I'm okay if there's less as long as they're better. All right, I have fulfilled my contract for the evening. I have successfully brought us on a tangent and taken the conversation far outside of Android apps. So mission accomplished, achievement unlocked. Right. Um, In a um, galaxy far, far away. And uh, we're we're rounding up on the hour mark, so I think uh, we'll... Uh, sort of put a stop to it here. Uh, so I will ask uh, first you, Eric, any uh, final words of wisdom, comments, uh, advertisements, commercials, uh, political statements you'd like to make? Ooh, political statements even? Dang. You're really you're asking for it. You don't want to ask a guy like me that. <laughs> no. Um, I, you got like 90 to... seconds. Say whatever you want to say. Okay. okay. Hey, thanks for being here, you guys, for our 400th episode. Thank you for, to all the listeners for listening. Um, and sticking with us for this long. Um, tell your friends. Uh, 401 is coming up soon. Tell your friends. Um, leave reviews on like iTunes and stuff about the show. Um, let, let people know about us if you, if you enjoy the show. If you think we're fun to listen to or or uh, you know or even if you think that you actually get some good out of this show like or educational maybe in a way to help you use a, your device a little bit. There's always a, a new person getting an Android phone, and uh, they they need they need your help, and we can we can help you help them. As I always like to say, if you like the show, tell others. If you don't like it, tell us, and we can maybe fix it for you. Absolutely. Or, yeah, tell others to point. You can point and laugh at us. <laughs> Listen to these guys, man. <laughs> Mr. Door, what do you have for us? What are your final words of wisdom for the evening? Uh, I will say we do now have a Patreon. It's not completely up and running yet, but you still can go there and participate. That's at uh, pay. That's at um, pay. Patreon.com slash Android App Addicts, and that is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Um, if you want to have direct influence to the show, that's how to do it. If you want to make sure we know you're thankful for the show, that's how to do it. If you want to have direct influence on how the show can proceed, that's the way you do it. If you want to let us know about special content that you would like for us to do or have 
that's how to do it. Um, period. Okay, so. there's no better way to get our attention than throwing money at us at the same time. Um, and I will say, do not forget everybody out there, elementop.com. Mark is the man. I definitely thank him. Uh, I thank him for every week coming out with Everyday Lennox. <laughs> and I also do thank him for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. I will say the uh, email well is running a bit dry. AAA at podnuts.com is the email address. Uh, if you've got an app suggestion, if you've got uh, an app request, if you've just got some kind words or even some unkind words that you want to say, uh, throw them out there, AAA at podnuts.com, and uh, we will uh, probably read it on the air. We may just read it among ourselves and ridicule your grammar, but more or less, we're, we're likely to read it on the air. Um, I appreciate being here with you, and as uh, Dor said, my home on the web is elementop.com. I do a, a podcast that allegedly is about Linux, uh, and I would appreciate you uh, checking it out. Um, and uh, just thanks for being with us for 400 episodes. I know I haven't been here for 400 episodes, uh, but uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, many of you listeners have. So uh, here's to 400 more, and uh, I'm gonna. I guess that ends this show, so we'll see you next time on Android App Addicts.